Please get your authorized version of the scriptures, commonly referred to as the King James Version. Please follow me along word for word, verse by verse of the scriptures we are going to be looking at today. Follow me along. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Follow me along in case I skip a groove because sometimes the mouth goes quicker than the brain. Okay, so check me out. Okay, check me out. Follow me along. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so, okay? All right? <laughs> Psalm 117. Hopefully we can get through this, this psalm in however long this is going to take, huh? Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people. For his merciful kindness is great toward us. And the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. And Psalm 150. The final psalm. And we as the church of the living God, living God upon our exiting this life to go to be on to, with the Lord in the next. We start out in Psalm 1, new creatures in Christ Jesus, beginning this walk with the Lord. But at the end, when we are to die, because we all die, and go to be with the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. And there is going to come a time in history, time coming, where everyone, including those that are going to be cast into the lake of fire, are going to give praise unto our God. That doesn't mean that they are going to be saved, as it were, but um, hmm. these very people who reject the Lord Jesus Christ are going to stand before him at the great white throne of judgment. The very one that so many of you reject and hate. You're going to stand before him and give an account for yourself to the one that you rejected and hated. Yeah. You think you're a tough guy, huh? Yeah. yeah. God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. Okay? Okay. Who is the author of confusion? Yea, hath God said. That be Satan, Lucifer, the devil. <laughs> Brethren, this, this video, I'm going to address three things in this video. Okay? Things that you and I have gone over before in great detail. But as it is with this Number one, being called to this position, and number two, doing it on enemy territory, which does not do anything to help uh, promote the word of God, okay? <laughs> but um, you uh, on the animal enemy's territory, such as YouTube, you are only relevant as your latest video. On to those who may stumble upon this okay so i'm going to address three things in this video okay number one is god is, god is racist <laughs> number two going to address any toys what aliens And number three, 
Can someone actually be saved, born again, converted of the Church of the Living God, and stay within Mystery of Babylon? Roman Catholicism. Okay? I'm going to address these three things in this video. Okay? So bear with me, brethren. Brethren, this video is not geared toward ye. Ye, my brethren, you already know this. But I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Have you ever dealt with a white supremacist before? A white supremacist. Now, I, I, I really get on these black Hebrew Israelites. I do. I do. I make no bones about it. And you, my Hamitic brethren, you know that. Okay? Because God is not a respecter of persons today. Okay? You who are saved, born again, converted of the Church of the Living God, who are of the kindred of Ham, my brothers and my sisters, praise the Lord. Okay? But I gotta tell you, white supremacists are, I would say, the lowest form of Japheth that you can find. I would rather have correspondence and deal with a pride-ridden black Hebrew Israelite than some idiotic, stupid white supremacist. Okay? I really would. I would rather deal with a black Hebrew Israelite than with a white supremacist. Oh! Mm. And see, white supremacy hides itself in many fashions. One of them is the... <laughs> like a certain Englishman who uh, believes he's part of uh, the lost tribes that are in England. You know, the Brizraelites. Okay? All right? But thinking that the, the kindred of Japheth, the... Uh, Predominantly, the white man is superior to all kindreds. But see, white supremacy hides itself in uh, Brizraelism, okay? British Hebrew Israelitism, like also with that the 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 Hamitic, the uh, black is supreme, has supremacy with the black Hebrew Israelites, okay? And even with some of that of the Shemitic, with the uh, Hasidim, okay? All right? But, um, you know, with these, these white supremacists, why do they all seem to be Trump supporters? Why? Why? Is there, is there, okay, if you're going to be, you know, Zikhail, white supremacist, there's number one of them that you got to be for Trump. What is with that? Okay. All right. And also number two, and this, this is the, this is the, you know, a white supremacist who says they're Christian. Um, it's like, hey, genius, guess what? You know, Jesus is a Jew. He's a Jew. He was Jewish. Of Shem. Is it not evident that our Lord sprang of Judah? Shem. Okay. Shem. The Hebraic people that were taken out of Shem. Not Japheth. Or not Ham. Okay. Jesus was white. Oh, you are so stupid. Hi, Bryce. You still believe that stuff, don't you? Yeah, you dumb little wicked devil. Yeah. Yeah. But Jesus was a white man. And then, and then these people, they go to stuff like, and they say, Adam means red in the face. So see, he was obviously white. Oh. If you're going to call yourself a Christian, 
and yet openly say that you hate Jewish people. Um, you might as well do a Manson and put a swastika on your forehead, okay? I mean, come on. Come on. All right. At least some of these uh, coadjutors who actually are themselves white supremacists, at least on the outset, they pretend that they don't hate the Jew, but that comes out in what they do, you know? And, uh, you know, uh, but... What about this thing? God is racist. God is racist. Because, and this is why, you know, Satan hates the Hebraic Jewish people. He hates the Hebraic Jewish people with a passion. Because God chose, God chose Abram, Isaac, and Jacob out of Shem. Okay? Out of Shem. All right, God chooses, okay? God chose, all right? And his choosing had nothing to do with the color of this, nothing. And see, these same people who say, well, God is racist because he, he chose the Jews. But yet, in the same breath, God has made it so that we Gentiles can be grafted into that tree of the Jew. But yet, God's racist, huh? And racist does not appear in Scripture. It's kindred, okay? But Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 1 under verse 11. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it, and hath cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, and the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them, and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor shew mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. Why is that? Because this is the beginning of the Hebraic line. I mean, the Hebraic line began with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But see, the children of Israel, the Hebrews, were going to go into the promised land, and we discussed this in the previous video, and they were to be the example. So the bloodline of the Hebrew was to be kept pure because eventually Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, would come of the Hebraic bloodline taken out of Shem, okay? And plus, you read about Solomon when they went on to others besides their own kindred, okay? See, the instruction in righteousness is for us today about that is, okay, uh, if you're going to get married, marry someone who is saved, okay? What, um, what, uh, what, uh, what does an infidel have to do with someone who is saved? Dude, uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, okay? Uh, what uh, fellowship hath light with darkness, okay? <laughs> I beg your pardon. I had a sneeze attack, only two. <laughs> but what fellowship hath light with darkness? Okay, what concord hath Christ with Belial? Okay, our instruction in righteousness is if you're a saved of the church and living God, marry someone who is of the church of the living God. Okay, all right, yes, I believe that you ought to remain in your kindred. Shem with Shem, Ham with Ham, Japheth with Japheth. Amen. There's not, that's scriptural. Okay? That is scriptural. Okay? But if you're going to get married, you, you get married to someone who is saved. You don't make that boo-boo and deceive yourself and marry someone who is not saved. Okay? All right? Who knows what God will do, but nonetheless, it's a problem that is best avoided. Okay? That's the instruction in righteousness for us today. But here in Deuteronomy chapter 7... There were specific purposes to 
that. Number one, the, the uh, strange women will take away the hearts of the uh, children of God here, the Israelites, and you got the Old Testament to prove that. King Solomon, I rest my case. Okay, but also that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, that God would come of the Hebrews, the Jewish people. Okay, that's another reason. Okay, verse four. You see this? You're looking at the scripture? For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. Okay? But thus shall ye deal with them. Ye shall destroy their altars and break down their images and cut down their groves and burn their graven images with fire. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee. Okay? To be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. He's racist. He did it based on skin color. <laughs> people actually believe this, brethren. And they are taught this by stupid, willfully ignorant, ignoramuses, devils. Okay, stemming from the black Hebrew Israelites, yes, but also these mindless devils White supremacists, okay? White supremacists, okay? The worst of the worst. They really are the worst of the worst. They really are, okay? Verse 7. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because ye were more in number than any people. For ye were the fewest of all people. That had nothing to do with skin color. Okay? That had nothing to do with skin color. God's God of the little guy. And Shem, Shem, one of the three, three kindreds, Abraham was taken out of Shem. We're going to look at that. We're going to look at that, okay? Abraham was taken out of Shem. Not Ham, or not Japheth, but Shem. And Shem, which is a very big kindred, but yet, out of Shem came the Hebraic people. You do the research. Hebrew is first allotted with who? Abram. Okay? Okay? All right? So, God's a God of a little guy. There are millions of Christians. But there are very few of the Church of the Living God. <laughs> well, there are millions of Christians, I would say that there are thousands Church of the living God. But see, verse 7 has nothing to do with skin color. God's choosing. God's got a little guy. You read about Gideon, okay? It's like the Lord said, okay, wait, 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 wait. There's way too many people there. Okay, get rid of this, get rid of that. And here with these 300. And isn't it interesting that you hear about Spartans and their 300? Hmm? Hmm. Isn't that interesting? Hmm. Isn't that interesting? The Spartans were an actual people, yes. But isn't that kind of a bizarre quinky dink, which coincidences don't exist, that you hear all this, and they even made Hollywood movies about the Spartans and their 300, and Gideon and 300? Isn't that something? Isn't that something? Yeah. Let's continue. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay? Hath, he, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt? Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. And repayeth them that hate him to their face to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hateth him. He will repay him to his face. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I command thee this day to do them. Okay? And the commandments and the oracles of God were given unto who? The Jews taken from Shem. 
the Hebraic people. Okay? And see, God chose, God chose the Hebraic people, the Jewish people, taken out of Shem. God chose the law. And God chose to give the law unto those he called out of Shem. And those he called out of Egypt, the world, from under the headship of Satan, Pharaoh. That's our instruction in righteousness. God chose the cross. So today, the elect are those who go the elected way of the cross. Do you understand? Okay? I hope you do. All right? But now go to Genesis chapter 9. Genesis chapter 9. Okay, as uh, I have talked about before with you, uh, there are people out there who take the thing of kindredism way to insane amounts. God is a God of distinction. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for the beauty of Shem. Praise the Lord for the beauty of Ham. Praise the Lord for the beauty that is of Japheth. Okay? But God is a God of distinction. If he wasn't, we'd all look the same. Hey, can you imagine, men, if you all looked like me? Oh! Or, even, or even better, if we all looked like you? Huh? What if all the dogs were a little chihuahuas? What if all putty titty cats were all Maine Coon cats? What if all horses were zebras? You get the point? God's a God of variety. Okay? That's not being a kindredist. That's fact. Okay? That's fact. All right? That's fact. But uh, apparently, and you know, like I said, people, uh, you know, the Lord has given your servant quite a few videos. Okay? And the links are there. If you don't want to watch them, that's your problem. Okay? But I, I, I recently <laughs> went through uh, my emails. Okay? I, I, I put that off because, oh, for someone who's a nobody, why do I get so many emails? Why? But anyway, anyway. <laughs> Genesis 9, verses 22 and verse 27. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren without. And Shem and Japheth took a garment. Now remember, Ham, um, the Africans. Shem, the Asiatics, such as Chinese, Japanese, and that stuff, okay? Uh, Japheth, the Europeans, okay? And it is from Shem, the Asiatics, which the Hebrew people came, okay? And there is, you know, watch out for these stupid idiots, and I'm being polite, who say that there's some sexual thing going on here. No, okay? What happened here is that he saw his father's nakedness, and he mocked his father's nakedness. He went and told his brothers, it's like, hey, look, look, father is all naked. Look at this clown. That's what happened. There was nothing sexual here, okay? If someone tells you that, they are working for Satan. If they're ignorant, that's one thing. But most of the people who talk and say that there's sexual stuff going on here, they're, they're of Satan. Get away from them, okay? There's nothing sexual here. Nothing, okay? And Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon both their shoulders and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father and their faces were backward and they saw not their father's nakedness. Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. So younger son, okay? Younger son, a younger son, okay? Younger son. Uh, Ham was not the firstborn. Was he the middle or the, the final uh, born? I, we don't know. But we know, uh, it says here, younger son, um, Ham was not the firstborn, Okay? Uh, I believe the chronological uh, chrono chronology is Shem, Ham, and Japheth. That is what I do believe. Okay, but see that you know, we're not to get into the you know to that kind of an argument. But we see right there that Ham was 
younger son. So that definitely means that Ham was not the firstborn. Okay? I've encountered that with some of the uh, black Hebrew Israelites, that Ham was the firstborn. We don't know if he was the second or the third. But he definitely was not the firstborn or else the Lord would have said so. Okay? And Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. Mocked him, made fun of him for being drunk and naked. Okay? No perversion there! Okay? And he said, Cursed be Canaan. A servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. And Canaan is equated unto who? Ham. The, Ham, the Hamites. Okay? All right? And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. And, you know, people took that verse, the slave trade, okay, and, try and exploited our dear Hamitic brethren because of this verse, okay, and the slave thing, okay? Wicked, okay, wicked. 27. God shall enlarge Japheth, the Europeans, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. Okay? The three kindreds, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Shem, the Asiatics. Ham, the Africans, which include like the Egyptians and whatnot. Okay? Japheth, the Europeans. Okay? All right? That's not kindredists. That's, that's fact. Okay? That is fact. All right? Three kindreds. And there are those who get way, way, way too crazy about that. Keep it simple. Shem with Shem, Ham with Ham, Japheth with Japheth. Okay? Simple. Simple. There are those out there who get that, who make that a little too complicated than it needs to be. Okay? But now go to Genesis chapter 11. Okay? Genesis chapter 11. One verse about Abram. Abram, the Hebrew. Genesis 11, one verse, verse 10. Okay? These are the generations of Shem. Shem was 100 years old and begat Arphaxad two years after the flood. Okay? Shem. Shem, the Asiatics. Okay? Uh, now verse uh, 27 in Genesis 11. Okay? Now these are the generations of Terah. Terah begat Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran begat Lot. What's, what's the point? Shem, Abram, Shem, Abram, Abram, who would become Abraham. Okay? All right? And then you look up the word Hebrew. The very first appearance of Hebrew is equated with who? Abram, the Hebrew. Okay? So, the Hebrew people, people, are those of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? Okay? The Hebrew people. The Jewish people. Okay? I know I I know black Hebrew Israelites, they 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 ye have God said, okay? But these white supremacists far worse. Far worse. They really are. They really are. They really are. Okay? Now, Genesis 12, 1 on to verse 3. Okay? Here's the calling out of Abram. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy kindred, out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will shew thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So calling him out, Abram the Hebrew called Abram out 
amongst his people and amongst his kindred, out of Shem, unto a land that the Lord would show him. That is the Hebrew people. Okay? It's not Chephethians. It's not Hemetic. It's not Shem in its entirety. Okay? Okay? The, the North Koreans, they are of Shem. But they're not Hebrews. Okay? This is simple stuff. Okay? And Satan and all his ministers of Satan and all his ministers who, you know, ministers of righteousness and these people do that. Well, you're a Christian, but you hate the Jewish people. Yeah, I hate them. <laughs> you can go to hell. Okay? Go ahead. Go to hell. Okay? You know, Jesus was white. No. Jesus sprang of the tribe of Judah from Shem of the Hebraic people, traceable onto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jesus Christ was not blonde hair or blue eyed. He was not a Caucasian. Sounds like a shoe, a shoe brand, doesn't it? Jesus is Jewish. Jesus is Hebraic of Shem. And here is why Satan and all his ministers of Satan, and all his ministers, excuse me, all his ministers of righteousness, here is why Satan and all those who work for and serve Satan hate the Jewish Hebraic people. John chapter 4, verse 22. Uh, let's read verses 21 on to verse 24 in John chapter 4. Brethren, you know this, okay? You know this, but Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither, <laughs> shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. The Hebraic people taken out of Shem. Okay? Not these disgusting, aberrant white supremacists. Not the black Hebrew Israelites. Okay? There's a famine in the land. Not of water or bread, but of hearing the word of God. The words of God. That will be fulfilled in its entirety during the time of Jacob's trouble. But there is a famine in the land. Yeah, get a Bible that suits you, not the scriptures. Christians are ignorant. How many Christians have you gone up to? And be like, you know, talk to them about rightly dividing the word of truth. You Christians. Do you even know what rightly dividing the truth, word of truth means? You look at me like I'm a heretic, don't you? I've never heard that. I know. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. Distinction. Distinction. Okay? And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Okay? Okay? So you got to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? Rightly divide the word of truth. All right? The way someone was made right with God under the law is not the way you are made right today. Because what happened? The crucifixion, the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ fulfilled the law. How? He shed his blood on the cross to make an atonement for our sins. Because under the law, you had to sacrifice animals. Okay? And those of you nitwits out there who say you got to keep the commandments and the law, why aren't you sacrificing any mules? Nonsense. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Go to Galatians chapter 3. Okay? Here's the, and here's what Satan hates. 
above all things. See, I'm, J I'm of Japheth, traceable unto Spain, Spaniard. And boy, who do we, who can trace back unto Spain, have yet the conquistadores yeah, and others. Okay, but I'm of Japheth. You might be of Shem. You might be of Ham. Okay, we're different. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Okay? <laughs> All right? Yes, we are. God loves different. God loves variety. But you know where there isn't a difference? And see, this is where this becomes dangerous with these stupid white supremacists. <laughs> Everyone I've encountered are Trump supporters. <laughs> Every single one that I have encountered are all for Trump. Napoleon! <laughs> okay? Every single one. What is it? It's a prerequisite that you have to be a Trump supporter to be a white supremacist? <laughs> but, here's what Satan hates more than anything. Galatians chapter 3, verses 27 on to verse 29. For as, many, uh, for as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ, there is neither Jew or Greek, nor Greek. Greek is a Gentile, okay? People make stink as well, just Greeks only. A Greek was a Gentile, a non-Hebrew, a non-Jew, okay? okay? Salvation is of the Jews, the Hebraic people, okay? So Greek there, yes, specifically it says Greek, but what is being said is us Gentiles, which us of Japheth, Ham, and even those of Shem, okay? Even those of Shem, okay? Because you're a Hebrew if you can trace your lineage to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. See, the sons of Ishmael, the Muslim, they can trace it to uh, Abraham, yes? Because Isaac was the firstborn, yes! But it, uh, uh, excuse me, um, uh, yeah, Isaac is the first, um, what am I saying? Ishmael, excuse me. Ishmael was the firstborn. Yes, he was. But it is in Isaac thy seed shall be called. Okay? God chose Isaac, not Ishmael. But the, the sons of Ishmael, you know, the Muslims and stuff like that. It's like, well, Ishmael was the firstborn. Yes, he was. But it is in Isaac his, his seed is called. Okay? The Hebraic people. All right? But see, in salvation, there's no distinction. Satan hates that. Satan hates that. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Male or female? So what? Hermaphrodites walking around? No. There is no distinction in salvation today. You devils, you hate that more than anything. That's why we started with this first. You hate that. And those ministers of Satan want you to believe that God is a respecter of persons today. By saying, well, God's racist. But yet us Gentiles have been grafted into the tree of the Jew to make the Jew jealous. The apple of God's eye. Well, see, he's racist. God made everything, including you. He has the right to choose what he has wants to choose. What are you going to say to him? Yeah, can you go ahead and call God racist at the great white throne of judgment, you devil? Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. You, you're going to the lake of fire anyway. Go ahead. Go ahead. If God were truly dependent on, you know, judging people upon color of their skin. He, the Lord himself, said even, you know, don't judge after the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Today in this dispensation, salvifically, God is not a respecter of persons. Look, you disgusting white supremacist. Look, you black Hebrew Israelite. Hey, you Hasidim. 
that's not a respecter of persons today. And if you are teaching that he is, the Lord rebuke you. See, male or female, man or woman, Jew or Gentile, doesn't matter. In salvation, there is no distinction. No distinction. And of course, Colossians 3, Colossians 3, verses 8 on to verse 13. Okay, Colossians 3, 8 on to verse 13. Come on, Brad, get there, huh? We'll get there. Colossians 3, 8 on to verse 13. Those of us who are saved, who come to the Lord on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord, we call upon his name, and he saves us. Okay? If you're broken of your self-righteousness, and you're a man, mankind, a true man, and you take responsibility because you put him on the cross, it's your fault. Okay? You better be afraid of him. You better fear him. Because if he don't save you, you're going to hell. Yes, you are. <laughs> it's not funny. 8 on the verse 13. You're saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. But now ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Filth, filthy communication. Yes, you can attribute that to profanity and whatnot, but filthy communication... Speaking contrary to what is pertinent for us today unto salvation. Okay? Words to no profit. Okay? Like saying that God is a respecter of persons. That you got to keep the commandments today. That uh, you, you can lose what is not yours to lose. And all that kind of nonsense. That's filthy communication. Okay? Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, Jesus Christ, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all, talking unto those who are of saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. Okay? All right? In salvation... Whether you're a male or female is irrelevant. Whether you're black, white, brown, yellow, Republican, or Democami, it doesn't matter. In salvation, we're all one. And Satan hates that. Satan hates that with a passion. Hmm. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, like we said, God chose. God is God who chooses. God chose the way of the cross. Okay? God chose the way of the cross. So you go his elected way today, you are the elect. Okay? Elsewhere, the elect is, yes, the Hebraic Jewish people. But see, you got to rightly divide the word of truth. And you, then you got to read context. Okay? Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, longsight. And I mean, come on. I mean, elect of God. I mean, look at what we just looked at. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, people. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Okay. Is every single person on earth forgiven? No. No. You want God's forgiveness? You want to be forgiven? It's easy. Go the way he chose. But see, there is a, there is a, um, a requirement. You have to be broken of yourself. You have to have a death. You have to die to yourself that you're this great person or that you're better than so-and-so or that you're special because you're from England or that you're black or whatever or that you're uh, a Hasidim. You have to be broken of that. You have to be broken of yourself and you 
Well, he died 2,000 years ago because of what you did. What I did today, he did. Yeah. 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 And see, unto someone who is in their self-righteousness, that doesn't make sense. But see, when you are brought down to the dunghill, uh, knowing that you're lower than that dunghill, the reality of that suddenly makes perfect sense. Because God is at work there. But if you want to put him aside, you know, boot the door, buddy, and climb up some other way. <laughs> so, who are those who are forgiven? Who come to those who come to the Lord on his terms, not their own. And you're out there rejecting the Lord Jesus Christ, you are not forgiven. His forgiveness is there. But you got to go his way, not yours. Okay? Jude. Jude. <laughs> My wife's like, you know, is this gonna, so is this going to be a three-hour video? It's like, no, I don't think so, but... Jude 1 and 3. On to 3. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James... To them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called, called, called the way of the cross. <sighs> Mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. It was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints, the common salvation. What is the common salvation? Oh, let's see. Well, let's, let's, uh, this is not in the notes, but let's start simply. Let's start simply. 1 Corinthians 15. Uh, verse 1 and verse 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Believed in vain. <laughs> Easy believism. Okay? For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Okay? Common salvation, common unto, unto all people. There is one way to be saved today. Common salvation. Okay? Common. All right? First Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and verse 6. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Calvinist! Black Hebrew Israelite! You vomitist white supremacist! Who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. All men. Would have all men. Okay? Not this satanic nonsense of elect and non-elect. Not this satanic nonsense that God is a respecter of persons because of your skin color. Or this charismatic satanic nonsense that you have to see God in order to know that you're saved. Okay? God would have all men to be saved. Is everybody going to be saved? No. Why? Because God has elected a way to go. And if you don't go that way, but boot the door and go up some other way, you're a thief and a robber. Do you understand? For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Common salvation. Okay? That's the common salvation. Okay? One way. One God, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. One. Not, one. not a way to the Jew and also to the Gentile. No. 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 By grace through faith. Okay? One way. Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. 
Okay? For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. You're not reading the scriptures. Uh, where's Christ? What gospel? For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, unto the, uh, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Greek is a Gentile. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. Faith, the faith that was in under the law, that God would honor you for doing what he said uh, as according to the law. Your faith with his, uh, was in God that if you did what he said according to the law, that you would be right with him. To faith. What faith? Faith that was of the law to the faith which is in the crucifixion, the death, burial, and resurrection. What does that mean? It is finished. In the previous video, the law is not a faith. Uh, the law was not a faith. Okay? The law was not a faith. So from faith, because under the law was faith and works, to faith, it is finished. Okay? It is finished. From faith to faith. Do you get it? Okay? As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Okay? But oh! Oh boy. And we're going to address this in part in the second uh, thing here. Okay? So, God is not a respecter of persons. Okay? The common salvation is a salvation that is available to all, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. The Greek is a Gentile. Okay? God is not a respecter of persons. All right? Please be aware of that. Now, number two. There will be a lot of links in the description box. And hey, if you're not going to watch them, I can't help that. Those of you who have talked uh, about this nonsense that's going on about the unidentified flying objects, okay, you got what? They're here. The video, they're here. Okay, where we talk about this. Okay? Recently, there's a lot of talk about the government, you know, that, that, that you know, that, that's that, 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 what is that, that spy balloon stuff. You know, go fly a balloon. But there's also this stuff about these unidentified flying objects where you can read like in uh, New York Times and stuff like that. I don't have any links for this because you can find it readily. These guys from the Pentagon, and <laughs> so Pentagram, I should say. <laughs> but these guys, these government people are, are not saying that they are aliens. But what are they doing? Very slyly. They're not ruling out. So there's like, well, there's no evidence that they, this is Eddie Torres. You know, E.T., the extraterrestrial. Okay. Uh, there's no real evidence to support that these are alien life forms. But we can't rule that out. What, Brad? You don't believe in aliens? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Turning your authorized version of the scriptures to Lamentations. Lamentations chapter 5. You want a good kick in the stone sometime, brother, sister? Uh, to be wary about uh, giving yourself over to sin? Read the book of Lamentations. Look what God did to the apple of his eye for doing that continually what he hated. Change your shorts, boy. Limitation, chapter 5, verses 1 on verse 3. I believe in aliens. Yes, I do. Limitations, chapter 5, verses 1 on verse 3. Remember, O Lord, what has come upon us. Consider our and behold our reproach. Our inheritance is turned to strangers. Our houses to aliens. Now, is that bug-eyed looking thing like Crowley talked about, which is describing devils? Or is it one of those things that has the dreadlocks and the 
man the bulls or that long sleek head and the mouth that comes out. Hmm? No. No. But they're aliens. Oh, so that's the little green men there, the guys with the tentacles and the mandibles and acid blood and cloaking devices, which uh, governments already have, okay? No. We are orphans and fatherless. Our mothers are as widows. Aliens. Oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Lamentations was under the law. Under the law. Okay? Did you see that? Did you notice that? Brother? Sister? Okay? Under the dispensation of the law, the word aliens is there in Lamentations. And it's talking basically about a foreigner, uh, a foreigner, not another world life form. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 to verse 17. For by grace are ye saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, the works of law. Lest any man should boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. You are a new creature, whence the Lord saves you, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Walk in them. Uh, good works. Not to be saved or stay saved, but as ambassadors, walking according to the scripture. Okay? Wherefore, remember... That ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. That at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise having no hope and without God in the world. God's racist, right? But now, in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were afar off, were far off, excuse me, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Where well, there is neither Jew nor Greek, bond or free, male or female, Barbarian or Scythian. Okay? But God's racist. For he, the Lord, is our peace. The Lord is our peace. He is our redemption. He is the blessed hope. He, can, he is our hope. He is our everything. Okay? For he is our peace who hath made both one, Jew and Gentile, Okay? And hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. The church of the living God, the body of Christ, one new man, mankind, one new man. Okay? You sisters, the hidden man of the heart, you get it? Okay? <clears throat> so, making peace. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. And came and preached peace to you which were afar off and to them that were nigh. Okay? But ooh, there we see aliens. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Now, that was for us today in this dispensation. Okay? Lamentations under the law. Ephesians chapter 2. For us today in this dispensation. Time of the Gentiles. Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. Hebrews, as we discussed in the previous video, Hebrews 11 is for the Hebraic Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble. Doctrinally, it's not for us today. You've got to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? But, Hebrews 11, ah, 32 unto 40. For another dispensation, the time of Jacob's trouble. So aliens 
appears. Under the law, after the law, and during the time of Jacob's trouble. But they're little green men and guy with the big eyes and the tentacle or the dreadlocks and the mandibles and the mouth that comes out and the tails and acid blood, right? Yeah, hath God said. That's what Satan wants you to believe. And what shall I what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, of Barak and Samson, and of Jephthah. Of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. And there are people out there who will take that verse and say the armies of the aliens that are going to come and their government made excuse me and their spaceships and attack us it says right there the armies of the aliens so there are armies of aliens going to come to people actually believe that I wish I, I wish I, that was hyperbole to prove a point I wish that were, but people actually believe that. Women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had, and this is describing things that are going to be going on during the time of Jacob's trouble. Yes, you read the Fox books, uh, book, uh, Fox's Book of Martyrs. Yes, that stuff went on before in the past, but you got to remember, the time of Jacob's trouble is going to make everything that people who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ look like. Time of Jacob's trouble is going to make the Holocaust of the Jew of World War II look like nothing. Look like nothing. Okay? And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings. Yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise, God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. So... There, yeah. See, I believe in aliens. Yes. The little green man with the big eyes. No. 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 Um, Jeremiah chapter 10. Jeremiah chapter 10. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. We can't use that for instruction in righteousness, can we? You. You specifically. Stop watching what the Lord gives me. Brethren, Church of the Living God, I'm not talking to you. Okay? I'm not. All right? I don't watch your stuff. Don't watch mine. Don't watch the stuff that, excuse me. Don't watch what the Lord gives me. Okay? Yo ho ho, pal. Jeremiah chapter 10. This is 100 verse 2. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord. Learn not the way of the heathen. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the heathen are dismayed at them. People be like... Brad, you, you don't believe in aliens? I, yes, I do. Brad, you know, do I believe that there are other life forms outside of Earth? No, I do not. Well, scientists have proved, you know, that there's like bacteria from Mars. And how do you know? How do you know? Because they tell you, right? They tell you. That, you know, the same ones that they tell you that the earth is millions and billions and 
trillions of years old that you came <laughs> out of water as a sniveling snot and that over millions and billions of years you evolved from a monkey into a caveman into a Republican or Demokami. They tell you that. Well, it's proven with the meteors that there was bacteria. So, so see, and see how they work that? So, okay. So, okay, there are bacteria from outer space with the comets and meteors and whatnot, right? Okay? Okay? So, there is bacteria on them. So, that proves that there's life in outer space, right? <laughs> All right? So, but see, the evolutionary mindset because evolution says that you and I were a piece of sniveling snot that came out of water. Okay? So that's that mentality. So there's bacteria on a big piece of rock that came out of the sky. Okay? So, hey, see, there is life out there. So see, over millions of... Because remember, the Earth is millions and billions and trillions of years old. So if there's bacteria on a meteorite that came out of the sky, so that means that there could be these aliens with mandibles and dreadlocks and, and long tails and sl uh, skinny things with mouths and the bug-eyed devils, I mean aliens, that Alexander uh, Crowley talked about. This is one of the stupidest things I've ever heard. Okay? How do we know this bacteria didn't come out when this thing came from the firmament? Because uh, air rises and, you know, you sneeze and uh, things go up like that. How do they know that bacteria isn't, as it were, an earthbound bacteria that got onto the meteor? Hmm? Other world life forms... Rubbish! Bologna sandwiches! Bologna's! It's caca! But see, two, here's the thing. What happens when all of a sudden there are these things that appear? We're going to say that, right? Those are devils. Devils. You know, the little bug, the, 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 the in the description box, those of you who have sent me, I've asked about the stuff going on with the, uh, you know, the <laughs> flying saucers. Come on, man, dude. Give me a break. Okay? Give me a break. They, the Jesuit order, who runs the media, okay, they, the very same ones who told us Americans that two buildings were taken down by terrorists with box cutters, okay? They are the same ones that told you that we were on the moon, okay? They, the same ones that tell you that the earth is billions and trillions of years old. And these they, these things that these spaceships or whatever we don't know how they work do you think that maybe the Chinese or the Russians or even maybe even the Japanese might have some technology that we don't know about and vice versa <laughs> yeah, you know the predator alien thing with the where he does that do 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 and he turns it. You know that thing actually exists. Okay, they have that kind of technology nowadays. Okay, lasers do exist. Okay, like I said, you know, a lot of people. There's a lot of technology out there that you and I are not privy to. Okay. But see, there's a reason why we're not privy to it. So that the Jesuit order could use that to play off a thing of an actual alien invasion. And what better way to openly disguise a devil? Other than an instruct, uh, you know, a minister of righteousness like Joel Osteen and those scoundrels. But what better way to dis openly disguise a devil than when he comes floating down in a little spaceship and says, I come in peace.
people. But see, signs. Signs. See, a lot of Christianity is all about the visual. Like these, these charismatic devils who's like, well, I saw the Lord. Therefore, I saw it. I saw it. I saw the Lord appear to me. No, a devil appeared to you. Or with signs and wonders. See, the problem with that is 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And see, this is where Satan is able to make all this mess that he has. Okay? He's allowed to. Because people don't walk by faith anymore. They want to walk by sight. you got to show me something. Okay? And while that may apply for certain things in this life, when it comes to faith, let me put it like the... Uh, if the Lord has to visually prove something to you, and you're not a Hebrew person, okay? But if you need visual stimuli to affirm that you are, that God exists, that's pathetic. It's contrary to Scripture, okay? That's pathetic. If you need that, then... How are you to, if you need to see in order to believe when it comes to the issue of salvation, faith, our Lord Jesus Christ, if you need to see that, if you need to see something, then how are you going to ever truly believe? Because your faith is predicated on what you see. And the faith, the common salvation, the faith that was once delivered onto the, onto the saints, we walk by faith, not by sight, dear friend. Okay? You're a pathetic excuse of a man if your faith is predicated by sight. Take offense and take a gate. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 on verse 24. And see, the charismatics with their blah, 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 blah. God appeared to me in a dream. God appeared to me in a vision. I've seen it ever since. You've seen the devil, boy. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 on to verse 24. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? I knew that you were of low IQ when you author, mentioned the authorized version. And you believe that the white race is the chosen race and that there are aliens in the sky and you say I have a low IQ because I believe the scriptures <laughs> bravo bravo yeah for after that in the wisdom of God the world by wisdom knew God knew not God it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe for the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. And the sign gifts died, were, died out with the apostles. Okay? They, the sign gifts started to slowly dissipate after Acts chapter 7. They No, brother, you're right. They didn't go immediately. But when Israel, Jewry, rejected the kingdom of God, the spiritual, you read in Acts chapter 8, the very first Gentile who was saved, like in the manner that, you know, Paul preached, okay? It wasn't that there was different ways of salvation. No, it was by grace through faith. But see, the kingdom of God had to be first offered on to primarily, specifically to the Jews first, and also then to the Gentile, okay? All right? And the baptism that Peter was talking about was an identification, not salvific, Okay? Okay, but there were not two ways of salvation with the death, burial, and resurrection brought in this dispensation by grace through faith. Okay, but you know, after Israel rejected the kingdom of God, 
You know, the very first one who was saved in the manner that we are saved today, you know, was a Hamite! An Ethiopian. Okay, an Ethiopian. Okay? Yeah. Remember, at the death, burial, and resurrection, it was always by grace through faith. But see, God is a just God. He had to offer the kingdom of God first unto the Jew. And then when they rejected that in Acts chapter 7, it's like, okay, the Gentiles. And it was prophesied in the book of Isaiah that that was going to happen. Okay? All right? And like the baptism of John, which was baptizing, identifying people onto the kingdom of heaven, Peter, we had Acts chapter 2, verse 38. That's why he said that. Okay? But see, you find contradiction apparently, right? With him, well, where was baptism where he said, uh, repent and be converted? Okay? Where was it? All right? All right? No? Wasn't that at all. It was that the kingdom of God was first going on to the Jew. Okay? Who was saved by grace through faith. And the baptism was a public profession as it is for us today. You read about that in Acts chapter 8, verse what? 37? Which is not in the Bibles, a majority of them. Why you are being baptized? Okay? Which is a public profession of an inner conversion. Okay? All right? But see, the Jews require a sign. And what is their sign today? That they are supposed to see their God in us Gentiles making them jealous. Paul talks about that. Okay? And let you think the Hebrew people are jealous of this Christianity? You King James Bible believing Christians, do you think the Jews are jealous when we who adhere to the authorized version hate each other over the commandments of men and the traditions of Catholics? But the Jews require a sign. Satan comes along. Well, what is a Jew? What is a Jew? Right? See how this works? And Instead of walking by faith, Satan and all his ministers of righteousness, signs and wonders, the charismatics, the Brizraelites, the uh, black Hebrew Israelites, the morons, the Jehos, the, the Catholic scholar. Okay? Even some of the Baptists. Well, yeah, yeah, you're supposed to wear the suit and tie all of the time and, and do the works by being at a phallus house all the time. Verse 23, but we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness, but unto them which are called the way of the cross, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Okay? And 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. This is 5 unto verse 11. Okay? Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing as God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the capitalist spirit himself, the seal until the day of redemption. Once saved, always saved. Okay? Therefore we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor that we that whether present or absent we may be accepted of him. For we must all those who are saved appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Okay? Those who are saved, who get caught up, who are going to be caught up, uh, the judgment seat of Christ is for us. Okay? Not those who are going into the time of Jacob's trouble. They're going to be judged at the great white throne. Okay? That everyone may, everyone, talking of the church of the living God, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. Oh, Paul never talked about the fear of the Lord. 
So there's terror there. You know what terror is? Yeah. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. How? By walking according to the scriptures for us today in this dispensation. Walking our talk. Okay? Being ambassadors. Okay? Very simple. Very simple stuff. And our Lord himself even says in John 20, verse 29, okay? After the death, burial, and resurrection, mind you, <laughs> Which was by great, which is by grace through faith. Okay. John twenty verse twenty nine, Jesus saith unto Thomas, unto him, Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have have not seen, and yet believe. If your faith is based upon your sight. That is a pathetic excuse for faith. And that is not the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. You need bells and whistles? Yeah. Yeah, you need bells and whistles, huh? Yeah. You need to, I need to see something. Okay. I know, now, hey, you know, when it comes to other things, like dealing with mankind... Be a Missouri mule. You got to show me something. Yes. But when it comes to faith, you want him to show you something? Read the scriptures. Read the book of Romans, starting in chapter 1. Okay? Read your um, indictment against you. The Lord pleading with you. Showing you your indictment, your need of him, and how guilty you are. Read Romans, beginning in chapter 1. Go ahead. Okay? Go ahead. And of course, in 1 Peter chapter 1, 1 Peter chapter 1, okay? 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 on verse 9, according, uh, not 2 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 1, chapter two, uh, verse 3 on verse 9, okay? What are you doing? Okay. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Wherein ye greatly rejoiced, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations." that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found on to praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, ye love, in whom though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Your faith is a pathetic excuse if you're walking by sight. It's not, a, it's not the faith that was once delivered onto the saints. And see, this thing about signs, what people do, not rightly, they, they, okay, they go to Matthew chapter 24, Mark chapter 13, Luke chapter 21. And they talk about the things. Now you got to remember Matthew 24, Mark 13, Mark tw uh, Luke 21. Those are all describing things that are going to be happening during the time of Jacob's trouble. Where we, the church of the living God, are not going through the time of Jacob's trouble. So see, you got people preaching to you today about signs and wonders. And they're taking things that are pertinent for other dispensations. Trying to make them relevant for today. And they go to the book of Revelation. They go to Ezekiel uh, with the sight of the cherubims. About the things in the sky. It's like, well, wait a minute, people. You're not rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? And, they, and, and of course, the, the charismatics, they love to go to Acts chapter 2, verses 17 on the 24, about how uh, Peter is talking about uh, Joel and stuff like that, you know? It's like, dude, dude, okay? Dude, what is being talked about in Joel chapter 2, verses 28 on to verse 32, okay? 
Signs were for the Jews. But in Joel chapter 2, verse 29, it says, On your servants and handmaidens, saying about how salvation was going to be offered on to the Gentiles, okay? And the great day of the Lord come, the second coming, okay? That's what that's talking about. Signs. Who, who requires signs? Jews. And their sign today is to see their God and us Gentiles making them jealous. But see, that's not happening today, is it? Okay, is it? But see, Catholicism, especially through these wicked charismatics, signs, you know, tongue talking, miracle gifts and healing. If these guys had the gift of healings, why aren't they in hospitals? Hmm? Why? Okay. And you got to remember, the thing about the signs, these people who are preaching to you signs, number one, are not rightly dividing the word of truth. And when they go to Revelation, the book of Revelation is not written for us at all today. There's instruction in righteousness, yes, but we, the body of Christ, the church of the living God, is not going to be going through the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Christians. Yeah, you're going to be going through that time. But we who are saved, born again, converted, we're going to be caught up before that time. Okay? That's the problem. People are taking things from other dispensations and trying to make them relevant for today, not rightly dividing the word of truth and deceiving so many of you who need to see something in order to believe. Aliens, okay, aliens exist, yes, as defined by scriptures, foreigners and strangers, that kind of thing. But E.T., Eddie Torres, extraterrestrials, okay, little green men, okay, guys with the man, the bulls, and the, the, the nonsense. What about bacteria? They, they tell, you know, whatever planet was once full of water, right? How do you know? Because they told you, right? They also told you that we were on the moon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They also tell you that the world is millions and billions and trillions of years old. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, have, yeah, have God said. And all these extraterrestrial uh, technological things that are, are being shot down, right? Right? Um... You think that the Jesuit governments tell us all the technology that is out there already? Come on, people. Come on. Um, if there were life forms on other worlds, why doesn't the Lord say so? Hmm? May these, what people call Aliens one day appear? Sure. Sure. But what does Second Thessalonians chapter 2 tell us? Okay. <clears throat> uh, verses 9 on to verse 12. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. For this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not in the truth, who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Hmm. What better way to openly disguise the devil than put a suit and tie on him? And for him to say, God loves you. Or, here comes a do -do 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 spacecraft. And a little, excuse me, a little bug-eyed alien comes out of there. Saying, I come in peace. What better way to openly hide a devil? And finally, okay, that was two, okay? And finally, can someone be actually saved, born again, converted of the Church of the Living God, 
and still be a Catholic. <laughs> okay, let, let, let's say, let's say you're a Catholic. And praise the Lord, you actually get saved of the Lord. The Lord saves you. And he opens your eyes and guides you into all truth. Okay? You might at first remain in Satan's system just out of pure ignorance, but the Lord will show you. It's like, wait a minute. Dude, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, everything is wrong here. Okay? Okay? Uh, maybe if, okay, I know that uh, Catholicism, the family ties, especially with um, the Hispanics and even the Irish, okay, and even the German Catholics, you know, Lutherans. Um, I know that the family tie about that, if they, like with the Jews, okay, if someone of a, of a Hebrew who actually gets saved, they'll be ostracized, shunned by their family. And I understand that happens with some of these people who get saved out of Catholicism by our Lord Jesus Christ. But um, Romans chapter 6, Romans chapter 6, I cannot believe, there, there's no way, ignorance for time, yes, but if you're claiming to actually be saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, and you've been a practicing, and you are still a practicing Catholic after the Lord saved you for about 10, 15 years, no way, no way, no way. No way. Uh, where is that in Romans chapter sin, uh, 6? Um, Romans chapter 6, verses uh, 1 on to verse 3. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live let any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ we're baptized into his death. Okay? How can someone who is truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God remain in such a blatantly obvious system of Satanism such as Catholicism? It also makes you uh, question, it's like, okay, what about these, um, these uh, 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 Calvinists with their elect and non-elect, like Paul Washer, and stuff like that. Son, you you thinking Paul Washer is saved? Oh, wow. But like the Paul Washers and the Ray Comforts and the John MacArthur's with their elect and non-elect Calvinisms and stuff like that. Okay, these people are genuinely saved, but yet, why are they still there? Okay? Why? I don't buy it. <laughs> There are millions of Christians. There are thousands of the Church of the Living God. Actually, I don't think it's a stretch to say that there are probably billions of Christians. But there are only thousands of the Church of the Living God. And you know, for instruction in righteousness, you go to Matthew chapter 13, for example, okay? Now this is good for instruction in righteousness, but you got to remember about when you're, I mean, instruction in righteousness is here, okay? But you got to remember about Matthew chapter 13, about the, the sow, the, the, the parable of the seed and the sower, okay? Matthew chapter 13, okay? Verses 18 on to verse 23. Okay. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receiveth seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receive, receiveth it. Yet, 
hath he no root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by, that's what anon means, not anonymous, not anonymous, but by and by he is offended. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word. And the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. But he that received seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Now, people like to say, and I, for our instruction in righteousness, yes, there's a lot there about, you know, people who say they are and they are not. Okay? Instruction in righteousness is there. Absolutely. But you know what, brethren? When the Lord said this, had he died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures yet? No, he had not. Verses 11 on to verse 13 in Matthew chapter 13. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. The actual physical literal kingdom. Okay? The kingdom of heaven. Okay? But to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given. And he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables. Because they seeing see not. And hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. So Matthew chapter 13 with this about the so the parable of the sower in context is about the kingdom of heaven instruction and in righteousness amen but then you say about well what about mark chapter 4 brad it says the kingdom of god yes 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 okay see when jesus was offering the kingdom of heaven unto the jewish people okay jesus christ is come in the flesh. God manifest in the flesh. Okay? The son of David, the king of the Jews, was right there. Okay? He was offering the physical kingdom onto the Jewish people. But they had to believe that he was who he said he was. Okay? Because the kingdom of heaven is all works. You read the Sermon on the Mount. It's all works. You don't need faith when you can see the guy. But see, that's the thing. He was offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jewish people. And the parable of the sower comes before the death, burial, and resurrection. And here in Mark chapter 4, verses 11 and 12, yes. And he said unto them, unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, which is spiritual. Okay? People like to argue, well, okay, compare this with uh, Matthew chapter 13. It's kingdom of God. There is a reference onto the actual physical kingdom because there are occurrences where kingdom of God can be a reference onto the actual physical kingdom of heaven. That is true. I don't think this is one of them because number one it is for the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? Number two, our Lord was offering the physical, literal kingdom of heaven onto the Jewish people. Yes, but see, they had to believe that Jesus was who he said he was. Hence, spiritual Okay? You get it? Okay? And after the death, burial, and resurrection, the kingdom of God is spiritual. Yes, not because the Jews forego, uh, forego the kingdom of heaven. Okay? And then they were offered the specifically the kingdom of God. Okay? See, when the Lord was offering the physical, literal kingdom of heaven unto the Jewish people, they had to believe that Jesus is who he said he was. Okay? Blessed are they that are not offended in me. Okay? Good master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why callest thou me good? There is only one good, that is God. Okay? And the blind beggar, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Okay? And Jesus stops. Why? Because he, had a, he heard a Jew, a Hebrew, acknowledging him as the son of David. You see how that works? Okay? You see how that works? It's not a contradiction. Okay? 
Yes, unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables, that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted, and their sins should be forgiven them. Now, you compare this, Mark chapter 4, with you go, go, go back to Matthew chapter 13, and you look at verses in Matthew chapter 13, verses 11 on to verse 13. Okay? Hmm? He gets to about the um, uh, verse 15 in Matthew chapter 13. Um, he gets to about uh, and should be converted and I should heal them. Okay? But see, kingdom of heaven in verse 11 is always talking about the physical literal kingdom. Okay? Okay? All right? But here in Mark chapter 4, okay, you have from 11 on to verse 12, okay? They had to believe that Jesus is who he said he was. Okay? And Jewry as a whole, as a nation, didn't. Okay? But like I said, for instruction in righteousness, yes, the parable of the sower is Yes, instruction in righteousness is very good. Yes. But Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. Verses 28 on to verse 32. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock, and to all the flock, over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. Now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Wolves. What do you think Roman Catholicism is? What do you think all the daughters of the whore are? Which operate in sight. Which operate in flesh. Brother Alberto Rivera said it once very greatly, in a very great way. Okay. You go from Rome to Christ. You cannot go from Christ to Rome. It is impossible. And if you claim to be going from Christ on to Rome, I, I've seen this. I was a Christian. Uh, I was a Protestant, but then I went to Catholicism. Or I was a Christian, and now I'm a Catholic. So you go from Christ to Rome. Brother Alberto Rivera himself said that's impossible. And amen. You can be called out of Mystery Babylon. But once he calls you out and opens your eyes and you realize how wicked and vile, disgusting Rome is, is he going to keep you there? Now see, by force? No. But see, if you decide to keep yourself there, what a wreck you're going to be. No. No. Someone who is genuinely, truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, remain, remain in Catholicism? Being called out of that nonsense? No. No. Maybe for a time in ignorance. Maybe. Maybe they'll excuse whatever. But no. No. No way. No way. There are some saved Catholics. There are Catholics who get saved. But a saved Catholic? There's no such thing! Oh. There's no such thing as a saved Catholic. There's a Catholic who can come out from amongst them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and be saved and converted of the church of the living God, 
But a saved Catholic? No, there's no way. There's no way. Why? John chapter 2, verses 18 on verse 20, and then we'll be done. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know it is the last time. Mm -hmm. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. The Lord within you would be screaming at you. Okay? You would know that something's not right. But yet you wanted to stay there? Though I would, I would hate to imagine the chastisement that would be... You know, once the Lord opened my eyes onto the charismatics, I was out of there like that. Okay? And, so, and some, some it takes time. Okay? Like with the church building thing. Okay, that will take time. But deep in your gut, if you're truly saved, going to a church building, God loves you, give us your tithes, you know deep down that there ain't something right about that. You know if you're truly saved. You know. But what, are you going to quench the spirit? And, and be fruitless to where you're a vessel of the Lord and it's like, okay, you're not going to listen to me. I'm going to put you on the shelf. I'm going to make your life a wreck because you want to be part of that. Yeah. Verse 27. Okay. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you and ye need not that any man teach you but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things and is truth and is no lie and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. That is talking about the Lord himself. That seal. Okay? That seal until the day of redemption. And he is going to guide you into all truth. Well, I'm saved and I, I've been a Catholic for 20 years. No, you're not saved. No, you're not. How dare you? Oh, I dare. Oh, I dare. Because you believe you got to eat your God. Hmm? You believe that it's a sin. Sin of, uh, uh, sin of presumption to know that you're saved. Every single Catholic. Every single Catholic. Do you know you're saved? I hope so. Do you know? Well, we can't really know. It's not what the scripture says. Well, that's presuming upon your friendship with God. You're calling God a liar. God says you can know that you have eternal life. The eternal security, brethren, is the surefire way to at least start a good dialogue with the Catholic. That's going to be it for this video. Um, not the video that I was intending on, but like I said, I went through my emails. Yeah. Yeah. So, hopefully this covers uh, quite a few things for some of you. Um, there are going to be a lot of videos in the description box. Um, if you have questions... Check out the videos. If you aren't going to do that and not watch this or whatever, um, go away. Go away. So. Brethren, thank you for your prayers, by the way. Um, these past, uh, there are some brethren out there who I have yet to contact. Um, um, several of you, and you know who you are. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, things have been really rough for us here recently. But um, though we weep at night, his mercy comes in the morning, 
His mercies are new every morning. And this is the day that the Lord hath made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Um, today is a good day. Today is a good day. So, pray for one another. I like to hear and know that there are some of the brethren who are actually doing that, reaching out to other brethren and conversing and having correspondence. Keep that up. Brother, that's what we're supposed to do. So you keep that up, okay? You keep that up. You keep that up. And when the Lord says for you to finally uh, to uh, do whatever he has called you to do, which probably is going to end up doing this, uh, whatever, that's between you and the Lord, okay? That's what he calls you to. That's between you and him, okay? But, uh, yeah, that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be there for each other, um, you know? So, thank you for watching this. If you do, brethren, we love you. We'll see you in the next video, whenever that may be.